thank you all for showing up uh, at a workshop uh, instead of uh, just going to another talk. Um, what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to create an app that downloads movies from the movie day, uh, DB and shows them in the app and you can scroll through them and show the details of it. And we're going to do this in Flutter. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, I'm an Android developer uh, by profession. Uh, I like apps, software, and uh, programming. Uh, we don't do Flutter in production. Uh, this is a side project for myself just to get to learn Flutter and see what it's about. Uh, besides uh, doing Android development, I help my wife run a uh, food blog. I manage the technical part of it, trying to keep everything working with WordPress, which is a really interesting challenge if it starts to grow. Um, well, the fun about Flutter is it's written in Dart. And, well, I'm a Star Wars fan, so I came up with this uh, small meme. Um, well, let's start with the workshop. Uh, I've put uh, uh, the code on GitLab. You can get it from uh, this repository. There's also a link in the slides, link to the slides in it, where you can uh, get uh, the API key. So I'll leave that up for a little bit. And if people have questions about it, um, you can just ask them uh, whenever you uh, get to the point or the step you are, uh, and I'll try to answer them. Did uh, everybody get the URL? I'm hearing nobody say yes, so I'll just leave it up. We also need uh, to install Flutter. Uh, there's a link in the README, of course, but it points to here where you can download the SDK if you haven't installed it already. Uh, it's really easy to set up. And I'll continue to the next one. Uh, this is the API key. It's just a, uh, a public surface. And here's a little animation of the app we're going to make. Uh, it shows a list of the Star Wars mo movies. Uh, you can uh, open the detail screen, choose, show some additional information, share it with uh, whoever you want uh, if you like the movie. And yeah, we're using the movie DB and uh, the developer documentation for the API you can also find over there. It's also linked in the steps in, and in the readme. And that's it about for the slides. Uh, this isn't uh, really a uh, presentation talk anyway, so we're going to do code. Seems I've broken Git. Okay. So we're basically uh, gonna start in step one. Uh, it's, uh, step one is setting up the project, uh, adding the dependencies, and uh, just querying the API. Um, you can see the different steps. I've uh, written everything out so you can follow at your own pace. Uh, but basically, we're going to uh, 
create the, the basic app and get the JSON data from the API and uh, uh, put that into uh, objects. So for Flutter um, to work fast on uh, mobile, uh, they decided to remove some parts of the Dart uh, engine, uh, namely ref uh, reflection, and a lot of uh, JSON parceling, JSON serializing uh, libraries, they use reflection to automatically uh, map to ob uh, objects, which is kind of annoying if you want to do Flutter and uh, you think, hey, I don't want to query a map directly, I want to have statically typed objects with correct types of everything. Uh, and then you would have to set it up your own yourself and write all the boilerplate code of mapping that to the values in the JSON. But luckily there are third-party libraries that handle uh, such a task for you. They generate code. So the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to add a library uh, that is in the PubSpec, PubSpec YAML, which is the package management uh, and build system file where we configure the project. You can already see some uh, dependencies you get. Uh, we have a dependencies block for the actual runtime of the application and a dependencies block for uh, dependencies during development, uh, which includes the test uh, framework. And we want to add uh, JSON annotation. And I'm going to see here. Yeah. You can copy uh, stuff from the steps if you don't want to type everything. Uh, JSON annotation is a library that um, adds an annotation uh, to the project. Uh, I've already created some of the models uh, that you get if you download the project because the models aren't really that complex. It's just a, a plain old Dart object. Um, it's a class and it has fields with all the names of the JSON keys and the types and a simple constructor and a factory method where you can uh, put in your uh, map of the JSON and it will create a uh, object for you. And the uh, uh, parts that are highlighted as not found are the code that uh, is going to get generated by the third party libraries we're going to add. Uh, so we need to add a build runner library, which is a basic library that uh, can generate Dart code for you. And the JSON serializable is the library that actually knows how to create uh, serializable objects from JSON. And at the top, we see a toolbar saying we can get the packages, upgrade them, upgrade Flutter itself, uh, see some uh, logging about how the Flutter installation is on your uh, uh, machine. Uh, but basically, we just want to get the new packages we added and then that they are available to our project. If you run that, uh, the Flutter build system will download them for you and it will create a uh, pop spec log file, uh, which basically logs all the versions at the moment you say get. Uh, if you don't have the file already, it will uh, create a new one. Um, if you have the file, it will download those specific dependencies that are defined here. Um, so you can make reproducible builds uh, every time you uh, want to, and are not uh, saying, okay, I want to have this version from this version up, up to the minor version, I think. Uh, and then if you up, uh, reload the projects in the next few months, the version gets updated and something breaks. Uh, this is to prevent that. Um, if you do uh, Android development, there are 
plugins to also add that capability to Gradle, but basically we just have to specify the direct version in the, the Gradle file for Android, which also works, but a lot of other languages also use a lock file to lock those dependencies. Um, package gets, I think it already got downloaded. So uh, what we want to do now is we want to generate the code for the objects we created. Uh, we do that by calling the Flutter, uh, the Flutter SDK, and then calling the package component, package pop run build. All these commands are also in the, the steps, so you can easily copy them yourself. Build runner run. I should have copied it, of course. Pop spec has changed. Please run pop get. Maybe I didn't run it yet. Okay, now it should have the dependencies. Build. <coughs> Definitely should have copied it. Um, what it's doing now, it's uh, executing the build runner project or the build runner library, uh, and it starts to create the code for us. And you'll see it pop up in a second. Here we get a models.g.dart file. Uh, and in uh, Dart, the g.dart is a naming thing uh, to mark that a file is generated for you. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot of code that gets generated for you. And if you would have to write it yourself, it could be really boring. Um, and it's also very simple code, just getting the map and matching that uh, key to the field and then setting the value. Um, but that allows us to no, it's referencing a static directly. A small error in the git. Um, so basically, um, I've already set up the project a bit uh, to make it a bit more easier uh, that we can start with code directly. Um, what we want to do now is we want to download the, the JSON data from the API and then parse that to objects we already created. Um, so I've already made some convenience methods that uh, have the URL and the uh, query parameters and the header set for you. And it calls the get movies search result uh, with the URI. And we need to implement that method to download the JSON. So, uh, uh, is everybody following uh, so far? Or am I going too fast? No? Okay. Um, Basically, we want to do an HTTP request, and for that we need we uh, need to add an additional library. Uh, to do the actual request, and then also install that package, and then it should be added to the project. Um, so, uh, Flutter works in a way that you can do asynchronous code with uh, an async await uh, construction. Uh, so, you don't have multiple threads that you can start up and do work on and then go back to another thread. Um, this is uh, more uh, akin to the JavaScript async await uh, or C sharp async await uh, uh, methods. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, method that does the HTTP request and it's going to return a future of this object. Um, so we know for certainty that at some point this object will be filled for us, uh, but we don't know when. Um, yeah, what we want to do is we want to add the import the HTTP uh, 
package, and we can alias that to HTTP oh, imports. So now it says it's not used, so if you save it, it will automatically de delete it. There it goes. Um, and this uh, provides us with an HTTP client where you can call on methods that uh, all do the get, post, put, patch, and head HTTP methods. We're just going to do the, uh, the get method because it's getting the JSON. Now I need to add the import again. So uh, what this does, it calls the get method on the HTTP client. Uh, it passes in the URI, sets the headers, and then awaits for that method to uh, process. And then once that's done, the value response gets set. And once we have that resource, it's a, a HTTP res uh, response. So you have a body, a uh, status code, uh, uh, request headers, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but we are interested in the body, of course. Uh, and the body is JSON, so we want to convert that JSON to a uh, map in Dart. Import, uh, which is uh, uh, available through the JSON decoder. You can uh, just call that method. It's a uh, framework-specific uh, implementation. And you can pass it a string. And that converts that JSON to a map. Um, here you might notice the dynamic. Um, uh, dynamic is a type which at, uh, gets, uh, you know, don't know what it is yet. Uh, it gets decided on a runtime. At the first time, it gets called. Uh, and the special thing about uh, Dart is also that this map can hold multiple types as a value. If you, for instance, would uh, work with uh, Java, you can also create a uh, map, but that's typed to one value type. So you can't put an int and a string as value in the same map as their original types. You can either put a map of ints or a map of uh, strings. And Dart uh, provides us a, uh, a way of doing that uh, by saying, hey, we don't know what, type, what the type is. So the moment we touch that code, it's get, it gets inferred by the system, and then we know what the type is. Um, once we have that map, um, if you wouldn't have uh, created all that code for the JSON serialization, you could just directly work with that map and call a method uh, or the uh, key on it, uh, for instance, title. And this should return a string uh, for title. Oh, of course, typing. Um, but yeah, then we would be iterating over maps with just string based and hope we type the correct uh, key and don't make mistakes with that. Uh, we don't even know if it's available or if it's in the map or not. Uh, so we want to use that map and create an object out of it. Um, movie search results collection. And we can call the factory method of that and pass it to the actual map. And this will return a uh, movie search result collection. What we are after. Uh, results. <laughs> so basically, this will return movie. Somewhere at the bottom, I know. Uh, this will return this object, uh, which has a uh, page number, total results, and 
total number of pages, the API returns, and the actual movie results we want, which contain the title, the ID, maybe an image, uh, uh, stuff like that. So now that we've created the implementation for that uh, method, uh, we want to use it. And I'm just going to add it here uh, for convenience sakes. Uh, API client, client is new API client. We need to import that library. Uh, also, we can remove the new keyword uh, in the latest version of Dart. They added that to make it a little bit less verbose. Uh, but basically now we have an API client that can call the API and return an object. Get movie search results. Um, but if you call this, actually uh, nothing happens because we're, we don't know when the result uh, is returned and we uh, can't do anything with it yet. So uh, what Futures uh, offers us are a few methods that you can apply on them, on them like uh, then catch error when complete uh, that handle certain stages of the, the future. So we're going to use the then, then method, uh, which returns a value of a movie search collection. Uh, And now we have that every time this code gets executed, when we get a result, then we get the value and we can do something with that value. So for now we're going to print the uh, titles of the movie in the, the log. Um, value results for each. So this code should call the API. When we get a response, print all the titles to the log. Let's see. Oh, no emulator running. Luckily, they're fast now. So it should boot up very fast. We're going to install the app. Um, the nice thing about Flutter is uh, during development, um, it creates an APK for us. And if we make changes in our code in the Flutter uh, code base, it tries to hot reload that code in the running application. So uh, doing changes on the UI or doing changes on logic can be very fast compared to uh, doing it the native route on iOS or Android where it needs to either recompile the whole app. Uh, with InstaRun, it's getting better, uh, but it still takes uh, in the order of 10 to 15 seconds to uh, recompile the app and then install it on the device. So basically, we have our running application, and it should. Trying to call. Seems to run into a snack. Convert the map. Let's see if this actually returns something. Uh, the nice thing about uh, Flutter also is that uh, debugging works out of the box. Um, you don't have to set up anything um, out of the ordinary, ordinary to get debugging running in your uh, working in your application, and this works for both. Uh, Android and iOS, so it doesn't matter which uh, device you're running on. Ah, invalid API key, of course. Uh, 
Yeah, your API key here. It's hot reloading now. <coughs> yeah. As you can see, uh, we did the request, and once we got it back, it started printing out the titles of the movie. Um, so uh, we created an easy API client that returns a response for us. And now uh, we want to use that response and start creating a UI for that. Uh, if we go to, let me just check if I didn't skip anything. Yeah, I didn't skip anything. So, so uh, everybody can uh, keep up with this. Uh, do you have questions? Uh, Ask them. No, okay, then I'll just continue. Um, so in the next step of our workshop, uh, we're going to uh, use that response that we created earlier, and we are going to create a grid view uh, that shows us the titles of the movie. Uh, it isn't very exciting, but it's a basic at work thing. Um, Let me change to that step. Disregard. Let's see if I know the git commands from the command line. Once we go to step two, um, the methods are already implemented because we already did that, so uh, it's no point of uh, uh, letting you do that again. Uh, I'm going to add the API key to it again. Um, so I'll explain a little bit about what's going to uh, happen here. Uh, I didn't do that in the previous step because I just wanted to get the API rec request worked out first. Um, when you create a Flutter app, uh, there is a, a main entry point in that application, which is the void main. Uh, if you have done Java development, for instance, you have kind of noticed this pattern, pattern which also has a static main to start the application. And in that uh, method, we call run app, which will run our app, and we pass it a widget. Um, almost everything in Flutter is a uh, widget. Uh, it's a UI component that uh, is uh, easy to use. Uh, but in this sense, uh, you can create an, a library, for instance, that is a widget, and somebody can just run that as an application, or you can. Uh, insert another application into your own application because everything is a widget. Don't know why you would want to do that, but uh, you can. Um, the My App is a uh, the, the the base uh, widget. Uh, it's a stateless widget, uh, which means that once it gets uh, run, 
uh, it doesn't change anymore. So all the values and all the state that is in this widget, that sta uh, it stays during the uh, instantiation of that object. It doesn't change anymore. If, it, if you want to change it, uh, it has to be recreated. Um, so yeah, for the, the base of our application, we started once, it should stay the same during the entire run of the application. So we use a st uh, stateless widget. Um, and a stateless widget has a method uh, built, um, which is very similar to how React has its components with the render method, uh, which gets executed and builds the UI for us. In this case, we pass it another widget called material app to give our app a material uh, theme and a material style. Uh, and these are all uh, platform uh, widget that's, widgets that are provided to us uh, through Flutter. Uh, yeah, we set up the theme, uh, set the colors and the textile, and then we pass it a home page, uh, which is the home screen that we're going to show in the app. Uh, in this case, it's also a, or this, in this case, it's a state full widget, which means uh, uh, this widget uh, can be recreated with a new state, but the widget uh, still uh, keeps alive. Uh, and we have a state object to manage that state and redraw the widget. Um, so the platform will call create state for us, which will return the state object. Uh, same as a stateless widget, uh, the state object has a build method where we do the actual creation of what we want to show in the UI, and you can put some logic uh, based on the state. If, if there's a list, do this. If there's no list, show another widget. Um, and you can decide how the UI component should look based on the state. Um, as I mentioned, we created the uh, GetMovie search results, uh, and it uses a future to uh, get the data and then uh, return the data to it once it has awaited the HTTP request. Uh, but that can happen anytime. Uh, yeah, if you have slow network, it can take ages. Uh, but if this widget gets created, uh, yeah, we don't uh, want to be uh, wiring up it ourselves like, hey, recreate when the uh, state changes. Uh, there is a widget for that. It's a very interesting uh, widget. It's called a future builder, uh, which you can give a type uh, for this uh, future builder, we give it the type uh, movie search results, and you can pass it the actual fu future that gets executed, and a builder method um, which gets a snapshot which has the state of that future. Uh, so depending on what the future is doing, we can return a different widget. For instance, uh, uh, we're loading something from the network, so during loading we want to show a loading spinner. And once the future completes, it will call the, uh, the builder again, and it will pass in a different state so we can check uh, what is the state now is done. Does it have an error? If it has an error, show something else. If it has the actual result, we can show it as a list. And I've already set up a movie grid widget, which gets the, the list when we want. Um, this should already work as an application, get dependencies, of course. them next to each other. Yeah. So now we have a empty view and we want to uh, load a uh, grid, view, grid view widget when uh, we have the data. Uh, if it's loading, we want to lo uh, show a loading spinner. Um, if we have an error, we, we want to show the error message. So. This I'm just going to copy because it's uh, a little bit more code. Uh, as I explained, the future builder 
you pass in the future and a builder method and the snapshot has the state of the actual connection and you can well, create an F4 switch on it and then do your thing accordingly. I see the difference. Um, there's a, a nice thing about Flutter, it tries to infer the type for you, uh, but uh, just for clarity's sake, I, I usually try to add it to make it more uh, clear, clear what is happening and you don't have to uh, go through all the code. Yeah, nice. We have an error. But uh, one of the cool things about Flutter, it, it doesn't crash your app. Uh, you usually, if you do native development, you have an error in your application, a null point, pointer exception, and the app will crash and give you a stack trace and you try to fix it. But now, um, if we just, let's see, return. It just reloads for us. Uh, it keeps the state and it reloads the, the widget with the correct code. Um, so here we want to uh, return a loading state. So uh, return, uh, I can copy that up also. Um, in Flutter, everything is a widget, so instead of having a uh, UI components that have lots of properties to set the, the padding and uh, all the alignment and stuff of, of a uh, box, Flutter actually uh, nests those uh, components into each other. So uh, here we have a center widget, which any, only, uh, the only thing it does, it's, it centers its children in the middle of it. And uh, we have a column component which uh, uh, shows the children in a vertical way and you have also have a row component which shows them horizontally uh, and you have different kind of uh, uh, container widgets that can do stuff for you. Uh, but this makes it very easy to understand what happens to your uh, UI if you just see the nesting of those components versus if there's all kinds of properties and they can interact with each other also. Uh, this is all yeah, top down from the top widget to the bottom widget. And they don't interfere with each other all the way up uh, back again. Return. So, well, you saw it very, very, very quickly. If we open the app again. That's still something that happens uh, if you uh, are working with a hot reloaded app and you open it again, sometimes it forgets that it, it got new code. Uh, but yeah, hopefully they are going to fix uh, that. Um, so I'm also already going to go to the next step. Um, in the next part of the switch case where the data actually should return, um, we need to check if there was a network error or there was an error. It could be a network error, a timeout or something like that. And yeah, if there's an error, show the error message and else we'll just show a grid view. Uh, basically what this code does, um, we have a grid view widget, uh, which has a builder method where we pass in a, a delegate which decides the sizing of uh, the children. So we specify that we want to have two columns and the size of the, uh, the items should be, I think, 30, 
65% uh, of the screen, maybe a little bit less. Um, and we pass in how many items this uh, grid view is going to have, which is the same as the results we get back from the API. And of course, there is a, a builder method which gets called for if every item in the list uh, where you get the index of the list so you can operate on it. Uh, we're just going to show the title of the index of, of that item in a text view. So if I would load this now. It's going to create a list view. So it loaded our data. And as you see, we have a simple grid items, two columns, and they're the size of the screen. And you can scroll through the list. Well, uh, App-wise, this, is, this isn't really exciting, but uh, shows that it works uh, and that we can easily create widgets based on futures. Uh, Flutter also offers the ability to uh, use streams uh, instead of um, uh, futures. If you have, uh, for instance, a, you know, a WebSocket that continually gets data, you can use a stream to uh, get continually updated once you get the, an update. And yeah, for that, there's also a, a widget called Stream Builder. Um, so, in a sense, you can really easily create UI based on those concepts. So, for the next step, we're going to uh, make the application a bit nicer. Uh, we're going to show some uh, images, spruce up the, the items a bit. Uh, let me switch. So this is basically where we left off. Um, I just extracted the, uh, the grid view to its own separate class, so we, yeah, it should be easier to read. And also, uh, if you would want to reuse something like this, you can. Uh, oh. ah, this uh, step already has the complete item. Um, let's see if this will run. API key, of course. extracted the code a bit more, so uh, it's a separate class. And instead of just using the uh, method itself to create a new text item, we uh, instantiate a movie item, pass it in the movie, a date format to format the date. And then here in this uh, item, which extends a stateless widget, uh, we use a gesture detector uh, to wrap that widget uh, so it can handle clicks or other gestures like uh, on long press or something else. You can even make your own gestures uh, and detect them if you want to. Um, yeah, We wrap a card and that card contains a image view and a footer which has the title and the date. Um, here we use a fade-in 
image, which keeps uh, the, it in uh, memory, and it tries to load it from the network. Um, K-transparent image is a, a library because it's yeah, basically a transparent image uh, that's in memory. It's just a byte array. Uh, there's also a, a asset network. If you want to load an image asset, uh, you could use that. Um, but this is just from an empty state to the actual image. Uh, the image view works, simply pass it the URL and say how it should be sized. Uh, here we're just fitting the height so everything is nice and clean for the poster, but if you have other aspect ratios you can fit weight or uh, what do we have more, yeah, scale down, cover, all the usual uh, things you can do with images. And yeah, of course, we're not doing anything uh, to handle null uh, errors yet. We just check if it's null, not null, show the image, else just show a transparent image. Um, but you can construct all kinds of way of uh, how you want to handle that. Uh, maybe make an image loader class that you just uh, call every time instead of doing it directly in the, uh, the widget you're using it. Uh, but that's up to you. Uh, that's one of the things that I think uh, you need to learn when you start working with Flutter is how uh, deeply nested do you want your uh, widgets to be. Uh, it's always hard to find the right kind of abstraction in your code. Uh, it doesn't matter which framework you use. Uh, so basically now we have a grid view which loads the image and the text, and as you can see, all the images are now preloaded in memory, so if you scroll through it, it doesn't need to download them again. So, if we go to step four. Should, yeah, here we're gonna start creating the next page in the application. So basically, we have the the, the entry page which shows the list, and now when somebody clicks the item, uh, we want to go to the next page and then uh, show details of that movie. Uh, Flutter works with a uh, routing system. Um, which you can predefine at uh, compile time, so you can specify certain route, routes which should uh, be triggered when you call navigator and then pass in the route. Um, so it can be kind of a URI-based uh, structure how you view your, uh, make the views of, your, of the navigation of your application, but you can also dynamically uh, create them in code and then just call that method. Um, here we have a material page router uh, we're using because it's a material app, and depending on which platform you're running on, uh, it will do the animation according to the, the platform. So on iOS, it will uh, slide in from the right, and if, it, if you exit the screen, it will slide back to the right. And on Android, it will come from the bottom up and go back down from the bottom. Uh, and you can create your own animations for that, or you can create your own router if you want to do something different uh, with that. But here we are just oh, uh, passing in the movie, and then we are returning a new widget. Uh, so I've already created the base page, uh, which is a stateless widget. It gets passed in the movie. Uh, that doesn't change anymore after the uh, uh, widget gets created. And then it's going to show the movie information, or it should show the movie information. Uh, we create a custom scroll view uh, because we want to add a header uh, to the screen that if you scroll up, it will uh, go out of, uh, out of the window. And if you want to, you could also add a title that will go to the um, app bar if you want. Um, that's all provided by the sliver app bar. 
you pass in how high you want it to be, um, if it should be pinned, you pass in a widget uh, which is going to show the actual header. And then the next item in the list is a sliver list. Uh, don't know why they call it sliver. It doesn't sound very nice when you say it out loud. But uh, the sliver list will uh, generate uh, list items for your scroll view. Uh, so in our case, we're going to create a uh, spec view which will show a poster, the title, uh, the, the vote average, the vote count. Uh, it will show the overview of the movie as text. So let's see what this looks like now. Uh, API key, of course. Really need to set up this workshop better. So nothing happens uh, yet because we need to implement the uh, on tap handling. Um, for that, we have a gesture detector, as I mentioned, uh, with a uh, argument on tap. You have multiple arguments: uh, long press. What, what do we have more? If you look at the constructor, there are a lot of different gestures that it handles. And if you want to create your own gesture detector, you can even add your own gestures. Uh, for now, we're just using the on-tap. Um, and here we call the navigator. Uh, navigator dot push a new route. Uh, basically, it needs the context of the widget and a route that needs to be pushed. Yeah, you could also use, if you set it up uh, earlier, navigator and push, uh, push named, then you can enter a uh, yeah, route name or a uh, string and do something with that. Um, in this case, we're just going to Use this route of. We need to import it, of course. Only the movie. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, as you can see, now we have a black screen. Nothing happens, but it does open the new page. Uh, basically, we have to uh, start implement the new page with how we want it to look. Gonna do that in step four. So we have this movie spec view. Uh, now it doesn't show any thing yet because the header also doesn't do anything. Uh, I know. I know what's happening. This is one of the issues with the hot reload still that. If you hot reload and you've changed in Git, it can get messed up. Let's see if rebuilding the app works. Well, then we just start to implement it. Yeah. 
here we want to um, show the image. I'll just copy that from the finished. Um, so for the, the uh, header image, we are using a stack widget, which just basically puts all the widgets on top of each other layered in a Z with the Z index. Um, we have added a, uh, decoration, a decorated box with a gradient, so if you would have text there for the title, uh, the, uh, the back button, uh, icons for the action icons, they are visible when it animates to a normal app bar from the image. So let's see if this does something. No. I think we need to have to implement everything for it. I'll just Copy this file, make it easier, not edit, open raw. Ah, it's named differently. Seems Git has messed up. Uh, okay. So, Uh, this is one of the nicest thing, uh, nice things about uh, Dart. Uh, when you create uh, methods, you can um, have, give them names, which is the name of the attribute. Uh, you can uh, put them without names, and then they are really compile time required. Uh, or you can do a positional uh, way that they have a fixed position. So if you want to have uh, multiple, multiple methods taking in different type of uh, parameters versus uh, then you can do that instead of uh, just creating overloads for methods. Uh, you can also give them a default value if you want uh, is hello. So now you can leave them empty, but because it's required, this is not going to work anyway. Uh, which is uh, yeah, a really interesting way if, if you're coming from uh, uh, Java, you're used to uh, just overloading the method, adding new uh, parameters and calling the, the super method. Um, yeah, if you're used to Kotlin, uh, yeah, you do it like you can also do a bit like this with uh, named parameters. Uh, so, hmm. uh, I think. I messed up the git repo when I tried to push the steps in all the correct order this morning. Um, but basically what it was going to show is, where do we have the... 
Uh, I can just go to the finished. So I'll just uh, explain the code from the finished uh, concept. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the endpoint is to show all the detail information, uh, but yeah, the step uh, was supposed to show a minimal information that you got from the search results, and then also do a new API query for the extra uh, information you can get from the API, and then just loading that progressively uh, when you get that uh, in. So uh, basically, you would get the movie results, then have the future builder that listens to the future of GetMovie, which uh, loads the movie data, and then uh, first show the minimal data uh, you have, and then load the full movie information. And basically, these are just almost copies from each other, but uh, they have more list items. Uh, so the minimal, on, minimal uh, movie info only has the movie specs, the text overview, and a loading spinner. And then the full movie info also has a tagline, a reviews widget that shows the reviews you can get. Uh, and you have a share button where you can share the movie. This is, uh, this is a library which adds native parts to your project for iOS and Android to do actual sharing and gives you a uh, convenience method to do that. Uh, I can also run this, for instance, on iOS. Let's wait for that to boot up. Um, so what I did in the movie spec view is uh, create a row widget. Oh, go back. A, a row widget, which is this part, um, which has two childs, two children, a, a poster, and a column which contains uh, the title, which is also where, uh, a column with a row with two children, and then it has a list of uh, chips which are the genre. Um, uh, and yeah, it took me a while to figure out how, uh, the, the, uh, how to size everything correctly, uh, because yeah, I'm also new to Flutter and I'm just used to uh, Android layouts where you can specify that per properties. And this is a nested structure of, uh, okay, now I change this, then the, the genres uh, were moving out of the, the, the rest of the list. So it, it, it is, takes getting used to, but it is uh, quite comprehensible when you start to learn it. So uh, it is an interesting thing. And if you come from um, the web, you're probably used to it with uh, flex, uh, Flexbox, because uh, they use those constraint uh, types uh, to do the layouting. So it could be very fam familiar. Um, let's see. The iOS simulator has also started up. So we can run the exact same application on iOS. And as you see, the uh, animation is 
going up from the bottom uh, as per the material uh, guidelines. And if you do that on iOS, it's going to be different. Yeah. So here you see it swipe in from the, uh, the left. And also, uh, this screen now has the back gesture that if you're a, uh, an iOS user, you're familiar with. Uh, we didn't have to do anything for that. We get that out of the box because uh, the components and the widgets are styled for the specific platform by the core team already. Uh, this doesn't have the back gesture. But let's see. I'm targeting. There's an interesting concept that you can do. Toggle widget mode. No. There used to be a button that you can uh, change the runtime of your application. So if you just flip the switch, uh, it would uh, execute the iOS runtime for you. And then the app wouldn't even restart. Everything would be just iOS styled. Um, that does show the power you can uh, have with fl uh, Flutter. Uh, you can go the whole platform route. Uh, all, a lot of the native widgets are almost pixel perfectly in, uh, created for you by the core team. But you can also create your whole uh, own branding style for it. Uh, if you have a larger brand uh, and you have a desi uh, design system, you can create that for your your application or multiple applications. Um, also, a nice thing is um, this is, has just been uh, recently added to the developer tools is that once the application is running, uh, you get a uh, three of the uh, widgets that are on the screen. And you can go to the code directly. And I thought there was also a possibility to highlight them in the actual running device, if you would select them. But here you can actually see the output of your code in the actual render tree while your app is running, which can be very convenient if you're trying to do debug uh, things. Um, Um, yeah, I don't know if there are questions. Uh, okay. If there are questions, there are two microphones on the sides of the stage. So either I can come to you, or you can just go to the microphones on the side of the stage. Please ask me some question if you have it. Yeah. And don't be afraid. <laughs> Very good no. for that. If nobody has a question, I'll have a... Uh. Hey, thanks for this. Uh, so if so you, here you've talked about Flutter as kind of a um, multi-platform development tool. Yeah. Where, why do you like Flutter over something like React Native or you know, some of the other cross-platform tools? Um, basically because uh, of the integration for the developer tools. Um, if you look at React Native, for instance, uh, you have to do a lot of hassle to get that up and running and uh, just get a debugger running on your device. You have to have the ID installed, probably Chrome, uh, connected the Chrome web developer tools, and then you can debug in the Chrome web developer tools while you're developing in another ID. Um, and yeah, I did that in my previous uh, work. We tried to set that up, and the first, first thing you notice is you need to go through hoops to get things done. Uh, and what they are trying to do with Flutter is make the whole developer experience really easy uh, for the developer if they want to do start with Flutter, uh, which I think is a major uh, thing if you want to look at a new technology. Uh, it should be easy to use. Um, yeah, and also the, the, the concepts that they're they are trying to do, they, are, they have an opinion on how they want things to work. And they implement them that way. But uh, Flutter is uh, fully open source. Uh, so you can change everything you want. Um, you can look all the way from the code you write in your application to the lowest level of uh, C implementation uh, and either use the respective layer that you're looking at or change it or 
uh, work with that, uh, which I think is also very powerful. If you do Android, for instance, uh, if you just download the SDK, uh, open it in your uh, uh, in uh, Android Studio, uh, there are no implementations of methods. You don't know what it's doing. You have to download the sources, then you can see some implementation, but still a lot of it is hidden behind layers and uh, uh, behind proprietary code. Or it's in the ASP repo, and then there's no match with your project. And the same goes for iOS, that's even more obscure because it's uh, totally proprietary. 